I'm super excited because someone is going to help me with my mission to shoot Jupiter for just £100. It's the best possible person in the world. I can't believe he's agreed to Skype me. It's Damien Beach. <laughs> Hi, Damien. Thank you so much. Thank Hi, you so much for agreeing to Skype with me. Absolutely yeah, fantastic. You are a hero. You're an absolute hero for me. You, sir. Well, you're the best planetary photographer on the planet are you not would you go along with that well it's uh, it's not for me to say is it <laughs> he totally is mr peach is not blowing his own trumpet methinks because in the last 12 months he's gone here the peak de midi observatory in the pyrenees in france and shot the most detailed picture of jupiter ever taken from our planet look at that and he's done loads of other stuff too I'm very pleased that you're going to give me a little bit of help with the mission to shoot Jupiter for as little money as possible. Okay, do I've got a little, um, I don't know, can you see this? Oh, I can see mount, telescope, weather, camera. Yeah. Okay, so I've got very little money to spend. What are the most important thing? What's Where should I spend my money, essentially? And what's how am I going to get my best image? I think with, with a limited budget. You, I think you still need to spend the, the most amount on the telescope itself. Because fundamentally, if you, the telescope that you have isn't of reasonable quality, regardless of how good the camera or computer or whatever else is, you're not going to get a good image. So definitely the number one factor is the telescope. Can I skimp on the mount a bit? Yeah, with planetary imaging, the the mount isn't so important because you're not imaging with long exposures, so it, tracking isn't so vital. So the mount, yeah, you can you can kind of cut back on that a bit if if the budget is limited. So I'm going to pop the mount. I'm going to pop it down there at the yeah, bottom. Okay. In last place. Um, yeah. Well, we're talking about the mount. I did try and get Saturn last year. Yeah. I did a video, Saturn for £75. I saw the rings. I got the Cassini division. But you know what I think? I think my biggest problem was the weather. A, it was cloudy a lot of the time. And then when it wasn't cloudy, well, there were clouds. The clouds were moving fast. And I've got a feeling now that that might be key. Absolutely. The, the weather is crucial, particularly something that we call astronomical seeing, so the, the amount of turbulence in the atmosphere. And unfortunately for, for the UK, all of the major planetary targets, uh, Jupiter, Saturn and Mars, are all extremely low in the sky, which means you're looking through a great deal more atmosphere than you are when the planet is high in the sky. So that makes it doubly more difficult. So the, the nights where the atmosphere is really tranquil and calm will be few and far between. And the only way to catch those nights is to observe regularly. What do you mean observe regularly? Well, I, just, I need to go out all the time and, and test it out and just keep on trying. Well, I, I would say to catch the best nights, particularly with the planets low in the sky, you need to, you need to be out there really uh, 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 every clear, favourable opportunity. So really, any time you've got you, I mean, the weather. Let's talk about the weather forecast on on TV. Any time you see a large high pressure system over the UK, those are the times to get outside uh, and attempt imaging because it's always under those big high pressures that we get the the steadiest seeing conditions. If it's windy and the clouds are rocketing across the sky, is it? Yeah. Shall I bother then, or just not bother? In in general, most sites in the UK when it's windy, the seeing conditions will be poor. So those nights probably aren't worth attempting. The, the best nights that you get here in the UK are, are generally ones where maybe there's a forecast of fog or mist. The wind is very calm. You have a high pressure system over the country and the jet stream is absent. Those are always the times when the seeing will be at its best from the UK. So what have I got? I've got a little app, Clear Nights, I think it's called. And that has vis a visibility setting. And it tells you yeah. when visibility is good and bad. Now, I'm guessing from what you're saying, you're saying a little bit of mist, a little bit of fog. Maybe that indicates that the atmosphere is actually quite still because you wouldn't get mist or fog when, it's, when, when the yeah. atmosphere is moving around. So the visibility is going to be way down, but maybe, maybe it's, those are the best nights I can go for. That, that, that is exactly correct. Many of the best nights that I've seen from the UK have been nights just as, uh, as you've described that have been 
on the verge of mist and fog because only under those conditions when the atmosphere is extremely stable um, do, do, do you get fog formation. So it's always those those kind of nights maybe where the telescope is, is really the dew outside is heavy. Um, it's always those nights that are the best. When it's, when it's windy or you've had um, a weather front go through and the sky is crystal clear following it, maybe a bit breezy, those nights are generally terrible for planetary observing. Wow, okay. Actually, should weather be the most... I mean, that's free, isn't it? I don't have to spend any money on... We- well, apart from moving to Barbados. Well, yeah, um, which obviously for most people isn't isn't going to be an option. But, yeah, the we- the weather is absolutely crucial to, to good results. Shall I put it, pop it on the top? Yeah, I would, I would put weather on the top with telescope beneath it. Then we've got camera here. But generally, the cameras that we use for planetary imaging are actually based on webcam technology. And it's basically just a small USB powered um, camera that you plug into the laptop. Uh, it has a nose piece on it that you can plug in to the telescope where the eyepiece goes in there. And it's those kind of cameras that we use for planetary observing. While we're talking about a camera, assuming I've got a fairly good night seeing, do I want to keep the exposure time as short as possible? Or do I want to get a bit more photons onto my CCD? What do you reckon? It's, it's always best to favour on the side of the shortest possible exposure times. So, for example, um, with Jupiter, you could be imaging it at, say, w- with the typical cameras you have today, you could be imaging it at maybe 30 frames per second and having the gain of the camera set really, really low. Um, so the, uh, the single frames would be very clean and noise free. But on the other hand, you could choose to run at maybe 100 frames per second at higher gain. And in, and it's been proven that that will actually give you a sharper result. So it's always best to favour on running the camera uh, as fast as you can, whilst keeping the gain, the camera gain set to around 70%. Cool. All right. You know, it all comes down to, uh, as with everything in life, I think it all comes down to money, doesn't it? Oh, no, don't tell me that. It does. It does. Right. With astronomy, I mean, you know, it's it's really how deep are your pockets. It really is. But one one great thing about astronomy today is that it's it has never been more affordable. I mean, when I started, you know, all this stuff, you, you just couldn't get. You know, telescopes were more expensive. Barlows and cameras cost a fortune. Uh, and today, you, you know, you can... You could set yourself up with a system for a, f- a fraction of the money that it cost back then. But yeah, thank you. Look, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. All right, thank you. I'll show you how we get on. Cheers, mate. Bye. bye. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Wow, Damien Peach, pretty cool, huh? So um, I will, me and Richtenstein will get a video out at some point, work permitting, uh, with the results of our Jupiter for £100 uh, mission. Um, in the meantime, why not check check some of these videos out and take a look if you've got a minute. They are super funny. Bye. That's right. Uh, this is our most popular and most budgety video so far. Cool space pics with a phone and binoculars. Woo! Also, please watch some of our other stuff. We've got uh, Saturn, Jupiter and Mars on the way, so why not take a look at Saturn for 75 quid? And those of you who live in the city, fear not, you can do astrophotography. Look at this. space for 150 pounds. Oh wow, look at that. Rick and I took off into space for our colliding galaxy mega zoom. And Rick and I watched something fantastic, which you've got to check out. It's the Elon Musk's Falcon Heavy X launch, which was awesome. Don't miss that. Don't be afraid to subscribe. We both have full-time jobs, and it is hard to get these videos out as often as we'd like. By subscribing, you will definitely catch the next one. And you'll make us feel like these videos and all the effort that's gone into them has been worthwhile. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.